about you, John, and what it means is that the water will find a way, and that's what happens to bigotry. It finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> dark days and maybe getting dark. What? Oh, this is Shintech sure. Hawaii. Community right. matters here. You guessed it. You guessed it on the first try. Okay, that's Roger gelling a camera on Roger drinking water. There it is. Okay, got it. <laughs> He's the founder and organizer of the annual Hawaii Book and Music Festival, and I'm his host today. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Community Matters. Now we're going to sort of inquire with Roger about what all this is. It's the 13th annual Hawaii Book and Music Festival, and it is on May 5th and 6th, which is what a couple of weeks away, actually. Yes. Yeah, three weeks. Three, three weeks away. Yeah, let's not let's not rush things. <laughs> three weeks away. <laughs> and May 5th and 6th. What what days of the week are they? That's Saturday and Sunday. Okay, yeah. and this is the 13th time you did that. Yeah. Couldn't you skip from 12 to 14 just to avoid the 13th? No, we want to go through this. It's like a trial of. <laughs> Fire, no, no. Uh, so we have our disaster behind us. So, no. I'm sure you'll be fine no. because the first 12 were really terrific, no. Roger. We, we did have a, an almost disaster last week. Um, we had a company, which shall be nameless, that said, oh, we'll get you 100 volunteers, don't worry. It takes about 100 volunteers to make it work. And then last week they said, oh, sorry, it doesn't that. look yeah. as though we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> a month out. So we had to scramble, it took a week to scramble, put together a campaign. You know, you know I, I, it's funny you should say that because yeah. this morning in my reading, my various things that I get, there was an article about a, a point in American culture called bailing out. Bailing is the ba word. Bailing. Bailing. And, yeah. and it's permissible, you know, the day before you get a call, sorry, can't do that, yeah. bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's altogether too much bailing going on. Yes. So, anyway, it got fixed. But you survived. Yes. You will survive. Yes, yeah. survive. Great. Yeah. So uh, I want to talk about the Book and Music Festival because um, I want to get my head straight on it and I'd like to sort of come together with you on exactly what it means and where it fits. Uh, in the landscape of these kinds of activities. You look around Hawaii, you know, you got lots of cultural things, lots of different cultural orientations having events. You have a lot of intellectual events, you have a lot of performing arts going on. Um, you know, gee whiz, uh, you know, if you look at the average week in Oahu alone, I can't speak so much of the neighbor islands, but it happens there too. Um, you know, there's probably, that come to my attention, 10, 12, 15 things yeah. going on. And actually, my sense of it, you know, in my, in my age now, is there's more of this. We as a community put together more programs. We come together more often. We, we sort of celebrate more of our own shtick here in Hawaii. And this is a wonderful thing. So question, where does the book and music festival well, fit? Well, let me give a little piece of history. Okay. I, I got into this scene about 2005. Uh, and at that time, there were two projects for a book festival. Uh, one was for-profit, one was non-profit. But they were going for the same sponsors. And the sponsor said, it's ridiculous. We can't sustain two book festivals in Honolulu. Uh, go, go sort it out. Ironically, both of them had come to me to ask them to program their festival, unbeknownst to each other. The non-profit model won. And when I looked at the paperwork of the for-profit one, I found that the executive director, the wannabe executive director, was going to pay himself literally the entire budget that we have every year. That's not sustainable, not I can sustainable. tell you. <laughs> so, uh, I can assure you it's not sustainable. I spent six months just putting that together. You know? um, so uh, book festivals are in major cities across the country, across the world. They're actually increasing in number. Uh, this is not the only one. No, there are many of them. There, it, I, I get a lot of push emails from other festivals and, and uh, uh, they're, lit, they're all over the world now, and some of them are enormous. I mean, over 100,000 people show up. Uh, and there's some, some really surprising ones. Tucson, you, you don't think of as a cultural hub of the world. They have 125,000 people show up. We get between 20 and 30,000, and we think that's pretty good. It's pretty good uh, for uh, no. Oahu, anyway. Um, the National Book Festival in D Washington, D.C., gets over 100,000 people in one day. No. Uh, the oldest one in the country is in Miami, uh, and they get over, well over 100,000. 
and so on. So, so what is it? What defines Book and Music Festival? Not only here, but okay. the ones you've been describing. The, the, the standard model does not have music as a major element. They, they use some music, obviously. You can't have a festival really without music. Uh, but the standard model is for New York, mainly New York publishers, to send their current promotion authors that they're promoting to the festival. So the programming essentially is free to the festival. So it's promotional. Yes. So for, for, for new books. For new books, books just published. Now they don't send them here uh, for two reasons. One is it's too expensive, and the second one is we no longer have any bookstores here, or very few. Mm, no, sad. We, we have. Everything's online, if at all. Know, yeah, well, we lost 17 Borders stores in one day in 2011. I used to spend a lot of time at yeah, Borders. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, our festival is actually quite different from most of them. Uh, it's become much more a kind of um, TEDx, free TEDx, uh, a theater of ideas. Uh, it's not all books. Uh, our music program is very strong. It's mainly Hawaiian music and hula. So which not many other festivals have access to that kind of regional uh, tradition. But, but the fact is that yeah. Hawaiian music and song is really important here. Yes. And everyone yeah. likes it. It defines us as a state. Well, it's also um, a remarkable part of the Hawaiian Renaissance. Yes. You know? uh, we are the beneficiaries of the immersion programs uh, because now it's been going 30 years. In fact, we have a couple of sessions on just on that subject alone. Uh, they're now producing a steady stream of people who go from kindergarten to PhD in Hawaiian. You can no longer do Hawaiian history if you don't know Hawaiian or if you don't have access to translation. Ah, interesting. Uh, and every year there may be half a dozen books that are published, not just here, but at universities that specialize in indigenous material. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hawaiian? In, yeah, in Hawaiian. No, they're, they're in English, but they're about Hawaiian history, mm. usually, you know. So they're not that readable often. They're professional books for, to further a professional career. Uh, but they're extremely interesting because they reveal whole new aspects that we never knew so about. This Book and Music Festival here, is, is, you founded it, and it's an extension yeah. of your, was it New York? You were an editor in New York, yeah. a book editor. So you, you're in Hawaii, and uh, you have a, sp a special skill, a special experience. Um, and this is part then of your editing, your personal editing yeah, I've tradition. Been, I've been involved in publishing since the 1960s. Um, Did they have books then? Oh, yes, they, they had books. They had books then, okay. They had more books then. G Guttenberg had been around yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I was involved uh, as, a, as a journalist. I was an editor on the New York Times Book Review. I was editor-in-chief of the New York Times Book Company. Uh, uh, I've had a literary agency for the last 20 years. Uh, so, and I've been involved in a publishing house on Maui that was a metaphysical publishing house that was a national distribution. So I've been involved in every aspect. So to me, it's a very- It's a natural. It's a natural, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and you're appealing to, to whom? And, and maybe this has changed over the past 13 years, but who are you appealing to? Who, who is your audience? Who, who is the, the crowd that you want to bring into this? I'm not sure we know. <laughs> uh, because we do a, an on-site survey uh, for about 10% of our attendees. And uh, there, are all, there are all sorts. And uh, uh, we do programming for toddlers, and we do program, programs for centenarians. We even tell you how to die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this year it's especially relevant yes, yeah, yeah, because of death with dignity. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, well, we, we, have, we have that. So we've, we've actually amplified the, the orthodox book programming with theme programs. So we have two days of, on health issues with about 50 top-notch doctors and experts on health issues. Okay, so that's not, a, that's not a book thing. No. And, and that's what I, I think no. I want to you know, yeah. get from you. This has migrated from pure books, yeah. uh, like the models you described on the mainland, but it has, is, it has become a, a center for thought and community that's, issues that's idea, yeah. and expertise, yeah. a center for coming together on yeah. so many things. Yeah. Um, so why have you moved that way? Um, is you, you find an inconsistency or do you find it no, it's all a, connected? The, the, the original reason was economic. Uh, when, when we started, 
Uh, Hawaii probably had the most vigorous regional publishing scene in the country. Um, and because of our isolation, and there were a bunch of publishers. And, and uh, then when, the, when publishing went digital, and with the big, uh, uh, you know, the Great Recession, it really knocked the publish, local publishers for a loop. Um, they started publishing very few titles, so they became very conservative. Uh, there was no place to display their books because the bookstores went away. Yeah. You know? So we had to do something to, to sustain that. So what we do, for instance, on the health program we have, we'll, we'll bring in a keynote speaker as a kind of anchor. So this year we have uh, John Kabat-Zinn, who's probably the world's leading expert on meditation and mindfulness. And so a number of the panels in the health program are connected to that issue. To, to that issue. So that's the way we, we bridge like a, the... It's like a think tank, all yes. in one time and yes. place. It's yes. like a concentrated, high octane kind of think yeah. tank. Because you have all this happening all at the same time. Pretty much everything you cover in think tech is, oh, uh, we, we do, yeah. one way or another. I mean, in two days. Yeah, and, very and, compressed yes, and, yes. and available. I mean, you walk yeah. around and, yeah. you know, 50 feet away, there's some other great topic or conversation yeah. going on. Yeah. And you can get a PhD in, in a matter of hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try and make it as interactive as possible. We require that every hour, that 20 minutes of every hour is Q&A. Uh -huh. uh, That's a good purpose. idea, yeah. We don't let people lecture. Uh, we we uh, uh, try not to let them. Some people say, oh, ask me a question and start off that way, but we don't permit that. You know, they have to give a, at least a brief presentation yeah, yeah. Uh, to get the thing going. Yeah. I've been, uh, over the years, I've been involved a couple yeah. of times in yeah. your book of music yeah. panels and whatnot. Um, and I, I was always impressed with the quality of the speakers mm -hmm. And the careful selection, I guess only a book editor can do this, a careful selection of topics. So, uh, I mean, it, it is a kind of book festival in the sense that these are very important topics with people who could, if they haven't yeah. written a book, they could write a book. Right. They, are the, they are the intellectual leaders available, I mean, where you have to bring them in, uh, into this crucible in the back of City Hall where you can learn so much in such a short amount of time. There's, there's an old joke about, uh, it says that 80% uh, uh, 80, 80 of people who graduate from high school never read a book again. 100% of them know they have a book in them. <laughs> <laughs> what percent write that book, though? That's a small well, percent. Well, actually, now this has become an increasing uh, part of what we do, is that self-publishing has become respectable. Uh -huh. um, the, the At least... These three, UH Press, uh, Watermark, Mutual Publishing, the old most established publishers, now run self-publishing operations. Uh, and and uh, I mean, they, they don't do rubbish. They do you know, memoirs of somebody who had an important life. You know, it's not so much that a person <clears throat> does write the book or not. It's the idea that in the 20, 21st century, you have the possibility yeah, of writing a book. Yeah, yeah. So you see your life maybe a little differently. Yes. You walk down the street, have an experience, and say, I could write about that if I choose to be disciplined over it and you know, do uh, whatever kind of self-publishing I, I can find. I can write a book. Therefore, your life is potentially preparation for this hypothetical book. <laughs> well, a lot of people, you know, towards the end of their careers, you know, want to know what, what did it all mean? What was it, you know? So a book is a kind of a, a, a way of painting a portrait of yourself. That yeah, a legacy gives, thing. Gives you some meaning to yeah. your life. Provide, even though you provide may not the have world had with a gift. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I don't like the world, but certainly your, your, your wife and your favorite nephew, who then, you know, who then have to read it. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but maybe, yeah. who knows, maybe you can give value to someone yeah. else. But, um, you know, the, the, all the technical aspects of bookmaking are available to anyone who, who wants to write a book. Uh, it's extremely difficult to get a self-published book yeah. adopted by the world yeah, because yeah. they can't find you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, well, yeah, we like yeah. to uh, review yeah. books here. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's, that's your show, yeah, yeah. to <laughs> review books with people and let, let everybody see yeah. the, uh, what the, um, the, the Sturm and the Drang <laughs> yeah. of the author and yeah. uh, the grease paints and the crowd and all that stuff. And 
and smell him and smell smell what he's about. That's well, very valuable. You know, the, you, behind <clears throat> behind your question is another question: is why do people come to a book festival? And they want to hear the voices. They the, the, they uh, even if they've read the book already, you know, uh, they want to hear the voice of the person who wrote it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's a grand idea to yeah. to sort of evolve a, a strictly a book festival into a festival that, that covers this kind of intellectual yeah. activity. Yeah. And so you can meet the people, you can hear the voices. I mean, after all, we don't live in a world where a lot of people, as you said, read yeah. books out of high school, after high school. Um, but they do read uh, social media, they yeah. do watch tons of TV, they do have that, you know, uh, interaction. And so, you know, in our world today, you, you have to go there in order, in order to be part of that conversation. Well, we reckon 60% of our attendees come as families. That means they're, 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 because it's a very safe, beautiful place. And you, you, once you arrive, you can all go in your different directions. Yeah. But when they take the survey, uh, the most frequent response, is, you know, we asked them, why did you come? You know, and they said, to bring our kids to expose them to reading, to books, and to performance, to live performance. Because you get less and less of that in school now. Um, it's it's touchy feely. It's yeah, actually yeah. engaged with people, yeah, yeah. with with the minds yes. of people yeah. directly, flesh and blood. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a short break, Roger. As okay. you know, we'll be back in a, in a minute. We'll talk about the specific programs yeah. at the specific venues on May fifth and sixth behind City Hall at the Book and Music Festival this year. Thank we'll you. be right back. Great. <coughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronauts. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Apparently, the State Library can Hello, everyone. Ted Rolfes, you're a host of our Think Tech show, Where the Drone Leads, where we talk. And this is a movie that came out last year. Noon, by the way, so on they're subjects doing related the movie, to and then the, author the, will be the more emerging technology That's and terrific. business of drones as they so might it, apply it, here in Hawaii. Uh, issues but we don't, you know, this hips, education, job, legislation, but the technology, public safety, all the things that you might want to We did try one year to do books to movies as a theme. from across the country. about three people showed up. So join us at noon on every Thursday, and we'll have a new subject, and we'll have new faces to talk about this most interesting Accessory. In case you were wondering, in case you were sort of examining your, your experience here this afternoon, that's Roger Jelnick. He's a book editor from New York, actually, and he's the founder and operator of the Hawaii Annual uh, Book and Music Festival. This year it's taking place, as it does, on the grounds of City Hall, behind City Hall, on uh, May 5th and 6th. It's the 13th annual one. We've been talking about where it fits in, in the landscape of this kind of activity. Uh, but it is unique, for sure, in its own category. Um, and I'd like to get a handle on what's going to happen so that anyone listening, you know, can sort of map out where he wants to or she wants to go on May 5th or 6th to get the maximum, you know, result. Um, we've had a really interesting new development this year. We've installed a new scheduling program on the website, mm -hmm. which enables you, you click on... You, it, it's geared to the schedule, not to the data about the about the people in the festival. So you go to the to the website, uh, HawaiiBookAndMusicFestival.com, and you press click on schedule, and up there's a list of what's happening that day, and you click on what's happening at the specific time that you're that you're looking. Cool. And you click on, and then it's color coded according to category of. Uh, the kind of event that it is. And so if you're interested in YA or if you're interested in uh, philosophy or interested in politics, they will have different colors. And you click, if you're interested in politics, you click on a politic one and immediately there appears the names and, and images of the speakers at, at an event at a particular time. And you can create your own itinerary that way. You can, uh, you can uh, uh, connect immediately to social media to tell your friends that's where you're going to be. 
Uh, it's a really great, remarkable great, program. Is this Very a, dynamic. An app on your phone, or is this? A you, it's a, this is all geared to phone use. Wow. We've, we've, what happened was at the end of last year, we always did we have an elaborate postmortem. Uh, we looked at the analytics on the website and realized that most people were looking at the program uh, on the phones now, not, not no longer on computers, and that they were most interested in what was going on at a specific time, and so we can't we went completely away from what we used to do, which is a very static, solid-looking schedule and you know, ABC of authors, and went to this very dynamic thing. Well, that's great. And it's really fabulous. Well, yeah. the thing is that um, yeah. although it's a, it's a fair amount of, of, of geography there behind City yeah. Hall, everything is close to each yeah. other. Yeah. And uh, you can make a beeline from one thing to another thing, even if it's across the field, in only a matter of seconds. So you can you can cover a lot of you ground in the, 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 the way it's set yeah. up. Yeah, it takes about five minutes to go from one side to the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a big site. Yeah. So uh -oh. you can have your kids go this way and that way, and there's food in case you need sustenance while you're going yeah. around there. Yeah. So I always need sustenance myself. Yeah. So okay. So who are the headliners? Okay. You know? uh, we put our headliners in into the. Mission Memorial Auditorium. It's the only indoor venue we have. It seats about 350. Uh, and we have a really wide variety. Uh, kicking off Saturday morning is a big book on the Hockelaire by Jennifer Allen and John Bilderberg. Jennifer Allen is the daughter of the famous football coach, George Allen. And uh, she was on the Hockelaire for much of the voyage, taking uh, kind of the authorized version of what happened. And John Bilderberg took a lot of wonderful photographs. Uh, and we hope to get Nainoa Thompson there and a couple of navigators. Uh, and there will be some OEV video. Where they, they did a lot of video of the thing. So that's the first event here. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. It can be very popular. I think. Very popular, yeah. Then we have um, uh, Bill Finnegan, who got a Pulitzer Prize for a memoir on called A Surfing Life. Uh, we have a, a YA author named Jessica Yoon, uh, whose book was um, called Everything, Everything, was on the New York Times bestseller list for almost a year, and the movie was made of it last year. And she's written another book, uh, that an, an, another movie is being made of it, and we're showing that movie in the State Library uh, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, she's flying in, arrives at 12.30, and <clears throat> the movie starts at 2, and she should be there by 3.30. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. By the skin of her teeth. <laughs> Ty <yeah>. Typical <laughs> logistics for us. Um, we have um, a, a number one best-selling romance writer, one of, I think, a dozen who are in the Romance Writers Hall of Fame. Uh, she's actually a Harvard graduate, um, and she's written an endless series of romances and with one set of characters. Usually, um, authors are very articulate, yes, aren't they? Yes. And and they have, they have a way with the language, uh, yeah. and they have a way of communicating, and it's a thrill for them to actually talk to their audience yeah. instead of just writing. Down. Well, these are authors who are very experienced at, at this kind of event because yeah. the, uh, part of their success is in exactly promoting doing, their books. Promoting yeah. their books. Yeah. Uh, we even have a play. I hope you bring some of them down here. Yes. On the show. On oh your well, show. they only arrive on the Friday. So if you want to give me think tank for Friday afternoon. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, you were saying you, you also have? Uh, we also have a play, um, Moses Goods, that, that he wrote about Henry Opuhaya, who was the first Hawaiian to go back to, not back, he went to the East Coast in order to get the missionaries to come, come to Hawaii. Mm, interesting. Uh, this is the first shot in what is to be the 200th anniversary of the missionaries in 2020. Uh, and there's a whole series of events that we will do with them. So we do a lot of partnerships of that kind. Uh, we do a lot of Hawaiian culture. We have one, we've always done that. We've always had one, we call them pavilions. They're, they're tents that are 30 by 30. They hold about 100 people yeah. each. It's comfortable, especially yeah. when it's very hot, sunny, yeah. Yeah. which it was, I think, last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this it makes it much more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, because of the... Uh, immersion programs. Uh, we now have a steady stream of books that we can uh, uh, present, we're usually in panels. So, it's people. so we're developing a core of public intellectuals in, uh, who know how to talk about uh, 
a whole revisionist movement in Hawaiian history. Yeah. No. Uh, it's, it's not only really history, it's, it's current. It's current. Well, for instance, movement. we have one panel with uh, Aaron Salah and, and uh, no, uh, Wilke Nogomayev on how the movie Moana is being translated into Hawaiian. You know? <laughs> uh, and and I, can't, I chose that because I, I always watch the Merry Monarch Festival on TV. And there was Aaron Salah explaining what he was doing to the commentator. So light bulb went on. I got to get him. Pick up the phone. And he said, sure. You know. Well, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I, I hear you talk about this, and I've heard you talk about it before. Yeah. And I get the impression that, uh, you know, this is a huge amount of work. Yeah. If you look at the schedule and look at the, all the venues you're filling, um, it's, it's enough work to fill up a whole year. It is. And you're picking up the phone all year long, no, every no. day, to try to shape this and, and tune it and frame it so that it, it works. Yeah. Well, I'm used, as a literary agent, I'm used to a life of rejection. So. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lesson for everybody. <laughs> so I'm not, it, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me that when something doesn't work. And, and you know, a lot of these people are really busy and they, they have plans, they go elsewhere. You know, I'm always annoyed that they're not there that weekend, but it happens, you know. Next year. You know, you know. Next year. <clears throat> but, I mean, you know, what, what is the test for you? What, what are the parameters to make that call? Who are you calling? Why uh, are you calling this person instead of that person? Uh, it's actually not that mysterious. Uh, we, we select books that have been published in the previous year. So that narrows the choices down considerably. So it's not, a, it's not an arbitrary, you know, what I'm dreaming up should be talked about. Uh, it's it's pretty much guided by what's being published. Uh -huh. uh, so there's a need uh, on the part of the publishers, there's a need on the part of the authors to be present and to make themselves available. Uh, where it becomes more a question of, uh, of real choice and real selection is in the theme programs that we do, and we do a number of them. So, for instance, we have uh, uh, one venue dedicated it's called Wellness, uh, and it has 40 or 50 top-notch doctors, experts, policymakers on, you know, a so dozen leading, a do dozen leading um, health issues that affect Hawaii, from climate change to homelessness to opioid right. crisis right. to teenage yeah. suicide and so on, um, uh, and and uh, I. I, I don't invent that list. I, I have an extremely knowledgeable and connected uh, mentor in Ira Zunin, who runs a, a clinic in Honolulu, uh, and he just knows everyone. And so when I sit down with him and we dream up the list of what we want to cover, uh, he just knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And over three months, it just begins to take shape. So we have a really impressive list this year. For sure, that. and you're getting information about yeah. other topics yes, exactly. from other uh, con yeah. con consanguity. I'm also situations. getting a lot of people who want to be in, who come, who, who, who approach who, you, who approach me, yes, you know. And, uh, and, uh, well, let, we have about two minutes left. <coughs> and I'm, I'd like to give you the highlights list of what's going on. You have a copy. Yes. Can you, can you just run through, um, you know, what's happening in what venue, or at least some of the things okay. that are happening in each venue. We have, we have 10 venues, and uh, uh, they are competing for attention with each other. Uh, so we have uh, two venues that are dedicated to current authors and their books and panels. Uh, and the panels range anything from uh, a Me Too feminist panel to a YA genre, how that genre is changing, uh, to panels around you know, specific topics. There's a, a biography of Larry Mayhaw, so we have a, a dialogue about that. Or we'll have two uh, illustrators talking about the art and illustration and so on. Um, we have a very lively cakey stage uh, that has uh, nonstop entertainment, uh, a lot of music. Uh, Mr. Steve, who's the national host for PBS Kids, it's his fifth year here, he's a Pied Piper. It's extraordinary. Uh, 
One of the biggest events we have is a free concert on Sunday afternoon with Jake featuring Jake Shimabukuro. Oh, that'd be very popular. That'd be very popular. We expect three to 5,000 people to come for that. You, know? uh, you don't get to see him free very often. Um, we have the Hawaiian culture, the, the uh, program that I mentioned. Uh, we have storytellers, professional storytellers. Uh, these are not telling stories to kids, they're telling stories to you and me. And then we have storytellers of children as well. Yeah. So it's a huge variety. It's huge, huge variety. It's huge. And, and it goes on. And we a lot of music, a uh, lot of first rate music. And local yeah. music. Yes, yes. But what, you know, what appeals to me is this, this, when you say festival about this, yeah. you really mean it. Yes. I mean, people come and they celebrate this. And they may know, like the music, they may know one of these venues, one of the events that are happening, but they don't know the no, others. No. So all of a sudden, you're expanding their consciousness yes, yes. into other areas, yes. and that's the real gift. Yes. You draw them down for one thing, but then you hand them a smorgasbord, and, and, they, and they go home a little more aware about the world. And I'm the only one that knows where something's not working. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so complicated. No. Well, Roger, but, I, I look forward. <coughs> I'll, I'll come down there uh, this time, and uh, I'll see you then, if not sooner. And uh, everybody should write it down. It's May 5th and 6th, 13th Annual Hawaii Book and Music Festival. A lot of work goes into it, a lot of people involved in it, a lot of strains of you know, awareness and activity and engagement. Um, really worth uh, ra raise the quality of your life on that weekend. And check out the website, hawaiibookandmusicfestival.com. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Very nice. It's so, a, it's you want to do a fiber on this? Okay, I'm going to do a fiber. Behind the scenes. What's that mean? Is it as good for you as it was for me? Okay. Wait, wait, as soon as the credits are open, turn the cameras.